Ladies and gentlemen, a benchmark for a Zen 5 CPU has popped up online. It does seem to be based on the Strix Point lineup of CPUs, and potentially this could be very impressive indeed, pointing some pretty big improvements from one generation to another. But then again, it also may be a little disappointing. What on earth do I mean by this? Well, let's delve in, shall we? Now, this particular Zen 5 CPU, as I said, is based on Strix Point, and it has the designation of 994-38 underscore Y. Now, we have seen earlier variants of this chip actually before. In fact, last year we saw one which was 994-14 underscore N for the end of its designation. But the likelihood is that this particular chip we're seeing here, 38 underscore Y, is a later piece of silicon than those, but it's still relatively early, yes, and certainly I would not say that it's retail silicon worthy, and that's putting it quite mildly. Now, I'm not going to delve too deeply into the specifications of Strix Point or the Halo chips. We've discussed them so many times on the channel before, and you can see them on screen. Naturally, we'll have to wait for AMD to officially confirm this stuff, but it does seem that these specifications, roughly speaking, are correct. This particular chip is a 4 slash 8 core, so of course that's 4 regular cores, and then of course we have um, 8 Zen 5C cores. Now ultimately, this would put the result here against a 7700X, both scoring around 270 points in the Blender benchmark, which is, well... This is where things get a little tricky. A 7700X is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU. So you could just say, well, how is that impressive? 8 cores versus, well, 12 cores, and the 8-core CPU is about on par. Well, of course, you can't just take that as a one-to-one -one ratio. It just doesn't work like that in the real world because we have absolutely no idea to the configuration and setup of this chip. For example, because it's a mobile chip, it could be up to 45 watts, but there's also a very good possibility it could be lower, for example, around the 30-watt mark. We also don't have very important information to know if there's issues with the silicon. For example, there are microcode issues, problems with the memory controllers. Maybe, for example, a single channel sometimes is just like, yeah, you know what? I kind of just don't want to work today, so we're going to just be going single channel for you, so too bad. Of course, the other big point is the 7700X is, well, 105 watts. Most likely tomorrow, I'll release a deeper dive into a lot of the Zen 5 IPC and uh, performance stuff. I actually was supposed to release it today, but this benchmark popped up, so I decided to kind of uh, hold fire so I could include this in here and also do a small rewrite of a couple of parts of the script. But uh, yeah, that should be up tomorrow because there are so many conflicting pieces of information regarding the IPC of Zen 5, so I really wanted to kind of delve in. So there's going to be some new information there regarding some of the other aspects of the process as well, so that should be up tomorrow. However, before we finish off the video, there is another thing that I just want to quickly touch on and this one actually, oh, um, I also want to give credit to HXL on Twitter for finding that particular benchmark. I almost forgot. Um, but before we close out the video, I do want to just quickly mention another thing. I want to give credit to WCCF Tech, where I actually spotted this particular article. Um, and it actually concerns Battle Mage. Now, I'm sure most of you at this point know that Battle Mage is going to be the successor to Intel's current Alchemist lineup of GPUs. And the rumor is, of course, that the highest end SKU is going to be roughly on par with an RTX 4080. Give or take, depending on the source that you're speaking to, the particular benchmark you're running, and so on and so on. Now, there have been some rumors that Battle Mage is going to be cancelled but frankly I've just heard that it's still going to be going ahead and most likely it does seem that it's going to be releasing later this year. Now we actually now have courtesy of an Intel LLVM, this is on GitHub, well basically now we actually have mention of Battle Mage G21. This actually seems to be the lower end SKU so it's going to be interesting to see what happens here to see whether the lower end SKUs launch first and then later on we're going to get 
the higher end versions or what as quite frankly there has been a little bit of confusion on that but personally speaking uh, and this is not a leak this is just my gut feeling I think we're probably going to see pretty much everything launching at the later part of this year and honestly I think that just makes sense it's going to be absolutely fascinating to see the pricing of this as well as RDNA 4 as most of you know RDNA 4 is also going to be kind of up to the mid range um, I actually think that it's going to be great for actual gamers, PC gamers. And yeah, I know cards like the 4090 or the, you know, the 5090 or whatever are probably the ones that get the most headlines and the ones that a lot of people covet. But ultimately, it's also quite difficult to say to someone, hey, you know what, this thing's going to cost you like 1500 bucks or 2000 bucks. It's like, you know, when you start going to the point where it's literally four to five times the cost of a next generation console... I know some of you are going to be happy to pay that and you know it is damn fun to be playing games at 4k at ridiculous frame rates and all of that stuff but it's also really expensive so i think a decent um rdna 4 based gpu or battle mage whatever combined with you know kind of a mid-range zen 5 cpu or what have you is going to be really interesting it's also going to be fascinating to see what happens to the used market particularly with, with um am4 I'll be very interested to see how many folks actually upgrade from AM4 to Zen 5. It's a really good argument, and let me know what your thoughts are on this, actually, in the comments below. Like, let's just assume, let's hypothetically just assume that Zen 5, and this is not a leak, this is just a hypothetical, let's say that it's 30% faster than the equivalent Zen 4 SKU. So, let's say, for example, that... 9950X is 30% faster, or the, um, I don't know, 9, whatever, you get the idea. An 8-core versus an 8-core is 30% faster. Would that be enough to entice you to upgrade from Zen 4, or even the Zen 3 CPU? Because, you know, most games, yeah, okay, you do get better minimum frame rates, but is it going to be enough to entice you to upgrade? It's a really interesting question. Um, so, I'll be very interested to see how the reception of uh, these processes uh, ends up being when they of course hit the market with that said guys take care of yourselves have an amazing day bye for now